Sabrina Carpenter's new album, Short and Sweet, has put her multiple love triangles back in the spotlight. I mean, this girl has been accused of being the other woman three times, and she's only 25. As Sabrina performed at the 2024 VMAs with two people in the audience she dragged in her latest album, Shawn Mendes and Camila Cabello, well, I had to wonder, is Sabrina actually this homewrecker that everyone's made her out to be? Or is she simply being vilified all because she loved a boy a few times? So we dove into Sabrina's relationships, past and current, with cheating accusations, apparent obsessions, and one person who seemingly abandoned their child in London to be with her, as well as shady lyrics, blatant music video references, and interviews that go back a decade to uncover the truth about Sabrina's alleged serial homewrecking behavior. And along the way, we also found major ties to Scientology, which we'll also be getting into. But hold on, how did Sabrina even get this home wrecking reputation in the first place? I mean, for someone like Ariana Grande, it took until her affair with her wicked co-star, Ethan Slater, despite pretty much every relationship prior, starting with cheating. Well, for Sabrina, it was actually her first widely known relationship that did the trick. And it all started with, get this, the Disney Channel. Sabrina Carpenter has been acting and singing since she was just a homeschooled 10 year old in Quakertown, Pennsylvania. But her big break happened in 2013 when she was cast in Girl Meets World, the Boy Meets World spinoff. The show went on for 72 episodes, wrapping up in January of 2017. Who was also on Disney Channel during that time? A plucky Jenna Ortega and Sabrina's would be rival, Olivia Rodrigo. Here's the thing though both Jenna and Olivia had nice things to say about this cool older blonde girl named Sabrina. Who are you most excited to see you perform tonight? Oh, um, S Sabrina Carpenter. Sabrina has always been so kind and so generous and just so lovely towards me even when no one cared. I've known her since I was like 12. That Jenna bit is relevant in another love triangle, but we'll get back to that. The point is, Olivia was a fan of Sabrina. That is, until Joshua Bassett came along. Joshua played Olivia's heartthrob in High School Musical, the musical, the series. I know, terrible name. But they soon took things off screen. I mean, he even wrote this song for her. But then, according to Olivia, things ended suddenly. Those old lyrics. I just wrote this song actually the day before this guy broke up with me. <laughs> and within weeks, pictures of Sabrina and Joshua started appearing and just kept coming. So Olivia channeled her love of Taylor Swift into writing a very personal album, including songs like Driver's License, Deja Vu, Do you get Deja Vu when she's with you? And Traitor. You betrayed me, and I know that you'll never feel sorry. Which seemed to not only call out Sabrina, but also implied that Joshua had started talking to Sabrina while he was still with Olivia. You're probably with that blonde girl. She's so much older than me. Than other actress. I hate to think that I was just your type. You talk to her when we were together. But it's important to note that Olivia never actually accused Sabrina of cheating. It took you two weeks to go off and date her. Guess you didn't cheat, but you're still a traitor. And Joshua Bassett actually said, I don't think anyone can understand, by the way, any of the timeline. Like, if I were to sit down here and lay out the reality of this whole situation, yeah. people would mind blown. It would be nothing like people think. So like, can we actually dub Sabrina a homewrecker here? Especially when it's a high school relationship that lasted from May 2019 to early 2020, less than a year. But that didn't stop people from attacking Sabrina online. So Sabrina dropped her own song, Skin, with an insanely fast 14-day turnaround time because after all, Should I tell you 
And Sabrina made it pretty clear who she was talking about with lyrics like Maybe you didn't mean it Maybe blonde was the only rhyme And Sabrina literally saying Don't drive yourself insane Drive like driver's license But here's where I think Skin went astray At least as far as this home wrecking image is concerned Sabrina didn't just call Olivia out for airing their drama Sabrina also rubbed it in Olivia's face that she had Joshua now You can try to get on the mark on the mark on the mark skin while he's on mine yeah on the mark on the mark and it sounds kind of reminiscent of one of Sabrina's new songs from her second love triangle, You'll Just Have to Taste Me When He's Kissing You. The craziest part about all this Sabrina Olivia Joshua drama is the timing. As Sabrina said in her honestly stunning ballad, All Because I Liked a Boy, When everything went down, we'd already broken up. They weren't even together anymore. But Sabrina was still allegedly getting Death threats filling up semi and she makes it clear this song is definitely about the Olivia situation by referencing stealing from the young in response to Olivia saying she's so much older than me and even pointedly saying Dating boys with exodus No, I wouldn't recommend it But once again, Sabrina brings in a bit of a petty punch with her otherwise valid point Like the chorus phrases her whole experience so well I'm a home but she made sure to throw in you said I'm too late to be your first love but I'll always be your favorite all I'm saying is Sabrina knows how to hit below the belt keep that in mind as we dig into these bigger and more scandalous love triangles so Sabrina's thing with Joshua was short-lived and ended before driver's license even came out and after that she took some time Time off dating. I mean, do you blame her? Her career was taking off. But that changed in February 2023 when an anonymous source texted Dumois, quote, spotted Sean Mendez and Sabrina Carpenter on clearly a date at Horses Thursday night. They were very comfortable. Which then was followed by sightings in LA late February, leaving Miley's album release party together. Oh, Sabrina, Sabrina, Sabrina. And finally, a dating confirmation from a source in March. However, on the same day the Dumois source allegedly confirmed the relationship, Sean himself said he was not dating Sabrina. Not that anyone really believed it. Fans even noticed Sean had been wearing a necklace with Sabrina's birthstone since January. But also, Sean has a history of denying his relationships in the media, even with his previous longtime on and off girlfriend, Camila Cabello. Are you dating Camila? <laughs> And she is the other part to this story. It's no coincidence that when people think of Shawn Mendes dating, they tend to immediately picture Camilla. They met opening for Austin Mahone back in 2014, and from then on, their careers were tightly intertwined. I mean, Camilla's first song outside of Fifth Harmony was a collab with Shawn. I know what you did last summer. Like, even when they weren't dating, it felt like they were dating. Are you two dating? <laughs> No. No. Oh, Every time I try to make moves, she just like swears me off. Okay, he friend zones me. He calls me kid. Oh my god, she is my favorite person in the whole world. And then they put out Senorita, which reminder includes the line You say we're just friends, but friends don't know the way you taste. The inspo behind Sabrina's song Taste perhaps? Either way, by the time Sean and Camilla actually started dating in 2019, it felt like they'd been together for years. My song comes on the radio or something and they're all about you. Like every song I've ever wrote. They even got a pandemic puppy together. You know, they were feeling cute and coupley and isolated and wanted to feel like parents together. So what do you do? You Get a puppy, apparently. But even that wasn't drama free because when they announced they'd gotten the dog, a lot of fans were upset that it was clearly a pandemic puppy that they got to help alleviate the boredom of quarantine. Either way, the pup helped elevate them to a state of domestic bliss during the pandemic. And that's when homewrecker Sabrina Carpenter stepped in, right? Actually, no. 
Despite things looking fine from the outside, Sean foreshadowed their breakup in 2021, saying they fought a lot. Yeah, and like <laughs> we, the worst little arguments. The longer the relationship goes, like the easier it seems to be to, to fight. And a couple months later, they posted a joint statement to their Instagram stories announcing their breakup, but promising to remain best friends. So even though Camilla fans reacted like Sabrina had stolen Sean from Camilla, the truth is their relationship had been over for a full year and a half. But someone did cheat in this situation, and it wasn't Sabrina. A few months into Sabrina and Sean getting together, guess who decided she wanted Sean back? Camilla. In April of 2023, Sean and Camilla were spotted at Coachella making out. And if you were wondering whether or not he was still with Sabrina at the time, her new album, Short and Sweet, like their brief fling, lays it out pretty clearly. If that was casual, then I'm an idiot. The second I put my head on your chest, she knew she's got a real sick sense. Now she's sending you some pictures wearing less and less. Trying to turn the past into the present sense. Last week, you didn't have any doubts. This week, you're holding space for her tongue in your mouth. Woo! And in case there was any question whether all these songs were about Sean and Camilla, I have receipts from her Christmas album in 2023. Maybe he met you somewhere in the desert. To her recent releases. Your car drove itself from LA to her thighs. Those rings look nice, but who's by your side? Damn it, she looks kinda like the girl you outgrew. There's the reference to her stealing his clothes, as we saw on TikTok. You're wondering why I have his clothes when missing my body's where they're at. The time Sean talked about mushrooms in an interview. And I promise the mushrooms aren't changing your life. His tweet where he spelled their wrong. This boy doesn't even know the difference between their there and they are. Damn. <laughs> I mean, she even gave this scathing commentary on Sean, followed by a reference to his recent performance of Leonard Cohen's song, Hallelujah. Every self-help book you've already read it. Cherry pick lines like there are words you invented. Cool stuff you highbrow, manipulation. And love everyone is your favorite quotation. Try to come up like you're so well spoken. Jack off to me, by Leonard Cohen. Like, Sabrina did not want people to have any question who these songs were about. She even added a cheeky comment at the end of Coincidence. Oh wow, you just broke up again. What a coincidence. And of course, there's the casting for the Taste music video with a Sean-looking Rowan Campbell from the Halloween franchise, as well as a little throwback to Sabrina's Disney Channel days, Jenna Ortega. Someone who also happens to look so similar to Camilla that all the way back in 2022, people were making TikToks about it. So was Sabrina at all in the wrong here? Besides throwing some pretty sharp jabs at Sean and Camilla in her lyrics, well, the one argument argument I could potentially see is that people have pointed out Sabrina actually started off as a fan of Camilla's. So could there have been a become your idol type of motivation behind pursuing Sean? Maybe. But some Sabrina fans have actually made a pretty strong case that Camilla was the one obsessing. I mean, she swooped back in to steal Sean back only after Sabrina started dating him. And then there's the total makeover with Camilla's new blonde hairstyle, her copycat wardrobe, even these uncomfortably similar photos where Camilla tries to do a low budget version of Sabrina's well curated shots. Okay, so maybe Sabrina wasn't a homewrecker in this instance either, but but what about the man who left the mother of his child and his toddler for Sabrina? Many people have seen photos of Sabrina out and about with her most recent boyfriend, Irish actor Barry Keegan. But what many people don't realize is that Barry has a child at home. Or at least that's the panicked headline news outlets were blasting. But here's the thing, when you actually look into the timeline, it's actually not nearly as scandalous. 
Barry met his now ex-girlfriend, that's right, they were never married, Allison Sandro at a bar in 2021. They went IG official months later in July 2021, and a year later in August 2022, they welcomed a son named Brando. However, another year later in the summer of 2023, Barry and Allison split up. Now, the reason for the split seems to still be based in speculation, but according to a source, after Barry's Oscar nomination for Banshees of Inishirin skyrocketed him to celebrity status, he took a long ride on the infamous I'm new to stardom booze train and started drinking and partying a lot, something Allison was not a fan of. They also said Allison allegedly suspected he was interested in someone else when split rumors started circulating in July. But if that was the case, the person was not Sabrina. Barry and Sabrina didn't even meet until Paris Fashion Week in September 2023, shortly after Barry and Allison had broken up. So yeah, unless he had some creepy plan to meet and win over this specific American pop star, I don't think Sabrina was the cause. In fact, despite meeting in September, Sabrina waited until December of 2023 to start dating Barry. And they've been pretty cute ever since. Barry even starred in Sabrina music video for Please Please Please, a song that is seemingly written about Barry himself, saying the song's love interest is an actor. I heard that you're an actor, so act like a stand-up guy. And asking him to not prove her cynical side correct by being a bad guy. Please, 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 don't prove I'm right. Interestingly, Sabrina even seems to call out Barry's heavy drinking party animal side that source mentioned, asking him to keep that side suppressed so he doesn't make her look bad. Whatever devil's inside you, don't let him out tonight. And excusing his drinking as part of his Irish culture. I tell them it's just your culture, and everyone knows their eyes. So, doesn't sound like the healthiest situation. And apparently it caught up to them because even though Sabrina begged him not to embarrass her. I beg you don't embarrass me, mother. In early August, reports came out that Sabrina and Barry had split. The reason? Allegedly, Sabrina broke up with him for his wild partying ways. One source even said Sabrina became fed up with him and that Barry acts like an idiot when he's drunk. Granted, now they've reportedly reconnected, but I think time will tell on that one because even though one source probably from Barry's team said they were back together and really happy, another source clarified Sabrina and Barry are in contact and trying to make things work, but they're not officially back together yet. And I have to say that disconnect between the sources does seem to be displayed on social media with Barry making I'm so in love, look at me type comments like saying can I have one when the Bratz page revealed two dolls from Sabrina's taste video or Barry posting that Bad Chem is his fave track from Short and Sweet. It does feel kind of desperate, especially with another source saying, quote, things aren't always solid between them and Sabrina is trying to keep things private. Barry likes to be more public and will sometimes use social media to flirt with Sabrina and get attention. But then again, maybe she's just being cautious. Because at the end of the day, Sabrina seems to have learned her lesson. The emotions of a relationship ending can actually pale in comparison to the hate you can get online if you don't go about the relationship slash breakup in the right way. After all, heartbreak is one thing, but ego's another. And if you do it the right way, it can be insanely beneficial for your PR without all the death threats. So is Sabrina a homewrecker? Well, by all accounts that I can tell, no. I mean, there are the complaints that Barry essentially abandoned Allison to raise Brando in London all by herself, but that's on Barry, not Sabrina. And it's not like she'd pulled an Ariana Grande going on double dates with Ethan Slater and his wife meeting his baby and then having a full-blown affair that caused him to leave his high school sweetheart slash partner of 10 years. We have a whole other video on that. If anything, Sabrina seems to be learning from each of these love triangles. After the Joshua Olivia drama, Sabrina started waiting for her new suitors to be single for a while before she stepped in. And after the Sean Camilla fiasco, she was more guarded going into this relationship with Barry, flat out telling him not to embarrass her, and having the guts to break up with him when it got to be too much, rather than hanging on hopefully like she did with Sean. 
But there's something else that might be affecting her dating life, her aunt. That sounds crazy, I know, but hear me out. Is Sabrina Carpenter your niece? Yeah, absolutely. Isn't that amazing? Sabrina's aunt, Nancy Cartwright, happens to be a well-known voice actor who voices Bart Simpson. What a day, eh, Millhouse? The sun is out, birds are singing, bees are trying to have sex with them, as is my understanding. And Sabrina seems to be close with her too, based on interviews. That I'm related to this, like, superstar. She's pretty amazing. The woman is a woman of many talents. She always blows me away. And there was, like, a couple times where we couldn't get a table, and she was like, like hey, man, I'm Bart Simpson. Like, what the hell's going on? <laughs> Sabrina, have you never been tempted to try and get yourself a little cameo in there? It never crossed my mind until right this second. But yeah, oh. I will make a call after this. And Sabrina following in her footsteps with both acting and voice acting. Well, I'm Melissa and this is Zach. Angela, mom and dad are going to be worried sick. The hero of legend will save us. I want to dress you up and cover you with bows. Here's the thing. Nancy is also a Scientologist. And not just any Scientologist. We're talking speaking engagements, robocalls as Bart Simpson for upcoming events. Hey, what's happening, man? This is Bart Simpson. <laughs> just kidding. Don't hang up. This is Nancy Cartwright. And this is a very special phone call to you. I'm now auditing on new OT7 and have been asked to speak at the Flag World Tour event on January 31st in the Grand Ballroom at the Hollywood and Highland Center at 6.30 p.m. It's gonna be a blast, man. An award for donating $10 million in 2007, almost twice her annual salary. Even more recently, she donated $17.5 million in 2019 and another $21 million in 2023. But does her aunt being a Scientologist mean Sabrina is automatically in the same cult? No, but it goes deeper than her aunt. There have been multiple blind items about this, but one claimed, quote, yes, her A-list aunt in her corner of the entertainment world is a world-renowned huge donor to this celebrity cult. Yes, her parents are, but the singer slash actress seems to have distanced herself from the religion. And the idea that her parents are in it too is further backed by the fact that all three of Sabrina's sisters allegedly made pro-Scientology posts in the past that they deleted once Sabrina gained fame. I genuinely hope that Sabrina is not involved in the cult, but the thing that concerns me is that typically Scientologists aren't allowed to be close with people who aren't in the church, as Leah Remini revealed after breaking free. They put very little significance on interpersonal relationships between family members. The church's biggest weapon is their policy called disconnection. It says that a parishioner shun their family member or friends. So there is definitely cause for concern, especially with blind items floating around alleging that Tom Cruise wants Sabrina to be the new face of Scientology. But those are blind items, so take them with a grain of salt. What all of this could mean for Sabrina's dating life is that when people are in the church, they're encouraged to recruit people, often through dating, and the church also promotes a lot of ladder climbing, even arranging relationships for top members like Tom Cruise with one woman coming forward saying she'd been selected to date Tom as a very important mission before his marriage to Katie Holmes. Either way, I genuinely hope Sabrina is not in Scientology and just happens to be allowed to be close with her family members who are. But what do you think? Is Sabrina secretly in Scientology? Does she really deserve this homewrecker label she's been given? Let us know in the comments and remember, where there's scandal, there's scandy. <laughs>